Hey everybody, it's Andrew at 518 Guitar. So I'm coming to you today in episode number three of the Ultra Beginner Guitar Series. Now, episodes one and two kind of dealt with uh, how to choose a guitar and how to hold a guitar, all very important things. So today we're gonna look at using a guitar pick to play your first few guitar chords and how those guitar chords should sound and some of the ways that you can make them sound really good in your learning process. So before we move on, it would mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe so that I can continue bringing you content. So that is super valuable to me that I'm bringing you things that you can use. Now without further ado, let's proceed. So the first thing that we're going over today is your first guitar chord. And your first guitar chord is the A minor chord. So the first thing we're going to do is look at how to position your left hand with the guitar. And the A minor chord is a great way to do that. Also, picking some additional chords to play with the A minor chord and making smooth movements from one chord to the next. It's so important to set yourself up for success by looking at chords that go well together. For example, rather than giving you a first guitar chord like this, and then another guitar chord like this, where I have to pick up all my fingers and move them, I don't think that's a great idea for someone just learning the guitar. What we want to do is find guitar chords that uh, share common fingers, and sometimes even common shapes, as you're going to see today. So uh, less for you to think about, and more for you to start playing. All right, so thing one. This is the A minor chord. We're going to always make sure, always, and go back and watch my show on my episode on how to hold a guitar and ergonomics if you're not sure about this. What we have here is your left thumb or your fretting hand thumb. It should be flat, so the pad of your thumb is flat. Do not do that. Thumbs up, like you're hitchhiking or you're trying to catch your eye or you're just telling somebody they've done a good job. Don't ever pull it sideways. You're not trying to bunt, okay? We're not playing baseball and trying to bunt. We're trying to play guitar. So you're keeping that thumb up and that thumb is flat and relaxed and it's going to be placed behind the guitar neck. Now this is where learning guitar online can be kind of tricky. It's not 3D so you can't really see what's going on here. But what's important to know is that the thumb is flat behind that guitar neck. So here is the guitar neck and that thumb is just gliding along the back of the neck. Okay so you're gonna find over time that thumb might want to go sideways. Okay if you do that now you're never going to be able to play even some of the most basic guitar chords. Okay, so make sure that thumb is up and flat. There we go. Now, these silver things are called frets. That's F as in Frank, R-E-T. Frets, that's a fret. That is a silver speed bump. And when we say play fret one, what we're really saying is place your finger just before fret one, right? So here's your silver fret one, and it's moving vertically. And you're going to place, let's go ahead and take our first finger of our left hand, and we're going to place that first finger behind, or just before, the first silver fret. And you're going to center the guitar string underneath your finger so that your left or your fretting hand fingertip is pressing that down. And it looks like this. And you're going to notice my wrist has a nice slight angle in it. Okay, if the wrist collapses, you're no longer going to be able to play the guitar at least not cleanly, you're gonna be very frustrated and give up pretty quickly. So don't let that wrist collapse. So the thumb is flat behind the neck. I don't just say that, to hear myself say it, I want you to check that. Your thumb is flat and relaxed behind the neck and your first finger is curled. So you're making a letter C with a flat bottom. You can bring that over and you are now pinching the guitar neck between your index fingertip and your thumb. And what we're doing is we're pressing the second string up from the bottom. We're pressing it just before fret one. That's a C note. All right, and we want to press it and see if we can hear that tone. You're holding your guitar pick. You're not holding it like a potato chip. No way, you're not holding it like a business card or a piece of paper. What you're doing is you're curling your right hand, finger and you're laying the guitar picks broad or fat side along the length between your little knuckle and your fingertip. And you're trapping it with your thumb so the pick makes a 90 degree angle with your thumb, the broad side of your thumb. And now you're going to take this over and point it into your guitar's hole. Or if you're on an electric guitar, you're going to point it toward the guitar's body. 
So there we go. You're going to now rest that guitar pick on string two. A little hard to see string two here, but I'm gonna trace it over for you and I'm resting my guitar pick on string two. Your hand, your picking hand is flat and relaxed and the wrist is flat and relaxed. You're not doing this. No way, right? Don't wanna do that. And you're not doing this. Your wrist is flat and relaxed. Go back and watch the ergonomics video, the prior episode for more tips on that. So we've got our guitar pick resting on string two and we've got our first finger resting on just before fret one of string two. That's really not a chord yet though. We're gonna add some other fingers and play the A minor chord. All right, now you're going to bring your middle two fingers together. Pretend they've gotten glued, okay? So you have glued your two middle fingers together. It's not even a space between them. And you're gonna bring those two middle fingers over and that third finger that's the ring finger of your left hand is just before fret number two. And that's on the string three. So the third string up from the floor. And the middle finger, remember, is glued to it and that is resting on string four. And that is just also before fret two. So there we go. So what we have is our first guitar chord. It's okay if it doesn't come out right at first. Don't be discouraged. You're going to hear like... All right, the number one reason you're getting that is because you are not using your fingertips. You're not arching your hand. Why aren't you arching your hand? Well, I can't see you, but if you're not arching your hand, then your wrist is probably collapsed and your thumb is over the top or sideways. If you're using your thumb up, flat and relaxed behind the back of the neck, then you should be able to make a letter C shape with your fingertips here and use those fingertips to press the strings down and pinch the strings, okay? You're pinching the guitar neck by pressing down on the strings. I know it's very, very different and bizarre at first, but it's okay. All right, so that's the name of the game, and here is the back view of it. That's what it looks like over there. There's the front view, and here's this view. Okay, I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit like so. That's that view. All right, this is called the A minor chord, and it is our job to play five strings of the guitar. String one is the littlest string toward the floor. Then we have two, three, four, and five. String one, two, three, four, five. I want you to go along and check and make sure the strings are making a tone. There's lots of things you're gonna encounter with your first guitar chord. You're gonna encounter things like this. You're gonna encounter thinking you're picking a string, but you're not really on that string. Your left hand is gonna move when you're not looking at it, and your right hand is gonna disobey when you're not watching it. Look, I know, it's okay. It comes with time. The idea is to be able to make this chord shape with your left hand. Understand that your hands are gonna to try to have a brain of their own at first, and keep your left wrist just a little bit bent toward the ground. When I tell people that, they're not sure what to make of it. In other words, if you pretend you're holding a sphere in your hand, and you bring that sphere over, you wouldn't be holding a sphere like this, would you? You wouldn't be holding a sphere like this, would you? No, you wouldn't. You would be holding a sphere, a ball, a globe, like that, in the palm of your hand, and bring that over. All right, so that's our A minor chord, and that's the number one thing I want you to work on. And remember, I go with a 70-30 rule. If 70% of the time it sounds good, if you pluck the strings here, and the chord mostly sounds good, I want you to keep trucking. You can work on perfecting the chord on your own time. That's super important. But in the meantime, remember, if it mostly sounds okay, we're gonna go with it. Next, we're gonna just take our third finger off of the guitar neck. So watch this. There it is on, and watch. Here it is on, and here it is off. When we take our third finger off of the neck, we now have an open string, string three, that's running down between your two fingers. Finger one is responsible for string two, and finger two is responsible for string four. So that means we've got string three right here. Look, string three is running like a river, right up between this bank of the river and that bank of the river, and string three should be passing right beneath, between the two fingers. That's super important. You want to be able to hear that string three ringing open. We want to hear that note change from string three pressed to string three not pressed. That chord is called A minor seven. But if we play that chord, 
simply from string four down, you have a C chord. So the strings that you play make a big difference, even if your left hand or your fretting hand is holding down the same notes. The order in which you play the notes can make a really big difference. So here it is as A minor seven with string five leading us down. And here it is as C with string four down. Again, A minor seven. C. All right, A minor seven, you're gonna notice sounds a little jazzy, maybe a little sad. And C might sound a little more stable, a little up, a little happy. So that's the idea. So we're going to be working through this beginner series and so your first bit of homework is to play uh, these two chords. I'm going to give you one more tactic, one more thing to work on before we get into episode two. One more thing is make it a smooth move. What does that mean? Well what it means is I want you to practice lifting up this A minor chord. Lift it up. It's frozen in time. Lift it up. In the midair, I want you to shift it over and I want you to put your fingers down in the exact same shape but on strings five, four, and three. Wow, what a different sound than A minor. Let's do that again. Here's A minor, pressing string two, string three, and string four. And now we have E. Lift, shift, place. Don't worry about like switching the chords quickly. Don't worry about strumming patterns. Right now, your main goal is to learn that A minor chord. Take the third finger off and enjoy that and put the third finger back on. And then when I say play the chord, what I mean is strum the guitar pick by stroking it down the strings toward the floor. Finger off, finger back on. Then I want you to pretend somebody froze your hand in this shape and you're gonna walk around town with this hand shape. Well, you know what? You're gonna lift that hand shape up, shift it to one fatter string each. Do not crawl. Let me show you what I don't want you to do. Oh, it's time to change chords. Oh, there's that one. Oh, there's that one. Let me get that darn first finger over. Uh-uh. Stop. Do not do that. That's gonna torpedo your playing forever. Do not crawl your fingers. That can halt your playing faster than anything. You're going to lift, shift, and place in a new position. So I'm gonna play that a little bit for you first. I'm gonna play the A minor, the A minor seven with the third finger off, and then the E. That's your first job. It's going to take a week or maybe two weeks of daily practice, 10 to 30 minutes a day, to be able to play this. But it's so worth it. Don't do marathon sessions. There's nothing to be gained from marathon sessions. All right, so it's just going to stress out the tendons of your left hand and serve to frustrate you if you're doing marathon sessions. And I'm just going to jam on these chords a little bit to give you an idea of the beautiful music that can be made from them, no matter how many years you've been playing. I'm going to use my fingers a little bit to pick the notes, and then I'm going to use my pick. so nice to help you out today and I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Leave me some feedback and comments below on uh, how I might be able to further assist you. <laughs>